My dear friends and fellow Catholics, on this Sunday we wanted to talk just a little bit about the Gospel. We know that this is the season of Lent, this is the season of Ashes, this is the season of Penance and Prayer and Mortification. We not like that more than the Gospel today. Also, the Gospel indicates that we all are tempted. We are tempted by the devil himself, by the world and wickedness. We're tempted by our own selves, those inordinate affections that we have for things that are wrong. We have to discipline ourselves. We have to be disciplined people. We have to be people guard, guarded in every action and in every word, lest we be liable to punishment. This is what Lent is all about. We have especially come upon Ash Wednesday a few days ago. We're happy to have Ash Wednesday finally here. We're happy to be in the season of Lent because if it was not imposed upon us as a, a way to do penance for our sins, to make ourselves more disciplined and more worthy of a heavenly reward, then we wouldn't do it. We have found all kinds of excuses, as we do for the other seasons of the year, not to do penance, not to say extra prayers, not to discipline ourselves in any way whatsoever, because we've excused every the most egregious fault, can we? So we have, we are happy that we have this first Sunday of Lent. Always you know from your catechism that this begins Easter time. Those especially not receive Holy Communion very often must receive communion once from today all the way to Trinity Sunday. We have 14 weeks to fulfill that, to remain in the great graces of the church. In other words, to be able to be responsible for confirmation or for baptism. But nonetheless, we have especially come upon the season in a very good way. We have had the parables of Secular Jesus of season, indicating that we ought to make sure there's no weeds growing with the tree of life. The tree of life has been planted with baptism and been nourished by the, by the diligence and the, and the skill and the professional attitude of our parents. The teachers that have guided us through life have made sure that this tree of life is blossoming and bringing forth its fruit. Make sure the weeds and the thorns of worthiness don't get in the way, right? St. Dr. Sostom says, it is sometimes a very bloody business to weed out those thorns as Jesus spoke about on the sixth of Jesus on Sunday. Those worthinesses, those aptitudes, those things by which we know are, we are falling into sin frequently. It's hard to avoid those things. It's hard to eliminate that app off our phone or that phone altogether or that, that magazine or that television program. It's hard to do such things. It is almost like a bloody business to our hearts and to our souls. But we must do these things for salvation. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about salvation. Salvation depends on how we conduct ourselves in this mortal life. And upon just a few more years, only 20 more years for some of us, more or less, we will be judged and then hopefully gain entrance into the magnificent kingdom prepared for us by God himself. The wonderful entry, won't it? Having done all this penance and prayer and all this sacrifice and discipline, we'll be able to see the reward for such a thing. But we must become worthy of that. We know the Fatima messages were very interesting in various ways. We like to look at them in a theological way. Because never before had we had definite proof that purgatory can last for centuries. I mean, the, the individuals have appeared to a uh, private apparition and the church has countenance that as likely as possible. But Mary herself said, Amidia, Amidia, to be in, in the purgatory to the end of the world, that's a hundred years now. I'm going for the next few centuries, right? Several centuries, 10,000 centuries, God knows. For another 15 year old girl who died in a Catholic society, unintruded by the worthinesses that we have around us, uh, how much for, so much for us, right? Francisco, little angel of Fatima, little boy, must say many rosaries before he could even hear Mary's message, must thus get to heaven. Many rosaries for little boy, nine-year-old boy. And how do we size up to these little, little saints of Fatima? If Amelia could be, was sentenced anyway to a, a purgatory to the end of time, we know that we have a great debt to pay for all those problems of sin and disobedience. 
all those individual likes and dislikes that are contrary to the will of God, surely we have a great debt to pay. And this is the time that we rejoice that the church has imposed upon us the let of the season. This is the time that we that we benefit by the by the encouragement the church gives us to pray, to do penance, and to uh, practice alms deeds. Those three things all go together. That Jesus indicates today, St. Paul, Paul indicates today, as Jesus indicated on Ash Wednesday, that our fasting should not be like the hypocrites. We should be sincere in our fasting. That's why fasting goes along with prayer, doesn't it? Was it St. Leo the Great, I think? St. Paul St. Leo the Great is the one who says that fasting empowers prayer, and prayer sanctifies fasting. The two go together. Fasting ennobles our prayer and makes us more worthy, uh, more apt to be a prayerful person. One who is not fasting, one who is not, who is not fasting in his heart, his mind, his eyes, his ears, his mouth, has, is no uh, good candidate for having his prayer received by Almighty God. Yes, that's why we mortify our minds, mortify our hearts, and make sure that we are diligent in the prayers that we say to Almighty God. Whereas the St. Bernard Clairol makes that point. He says we should be fasting not only in our tummies, but fasting our eyes. Our eyes should fast, our ears should fast, our mouth should fast, our soul should fast, even our hearts should fast. How do these things fast? Why does Father say sometimes we get anointed with ashes after the Sunday Mass? We get anointed with oil. We get anointed with ashes because it's a way of speech by which indicates something that we know bodily represents something in the soul. How does our eyes fast? We fast from abstaining, not altogether, but re regulating what we look at. How do our ears fast? We regulate, not have seen all together, we regulate those things that we hear. The worldly things, we try to stay away from worldly entertainments and amusements, mortify and have our ears fast. <laughs> Same thing with our mouth. Our mouth fast is regulated in what we say, as we must regulate the food that we, that we intake uh, throughout the season of Lent, those flesh to fasting. How does a heart fast? Our heart is fasting in the sense that it regulates very carefully those affections that it has for other things and other people, not of God. And of course, our soul fasts. And we prepare for the everlasting fast of abstaining altogether from sin and the occasion of sin. Yes, we know that occasion of sin is ever evident. We can't altogether abstain from the occasion of sin. Or else we'd be in hermit in a desert. Uh, even there, the invitation of Christ says, Do not without your temptations, being a hermit in a desert. But we, our soul must fast and abstain from those things that are illegitimate, you know, that we may have the eternal fast in heaven, the eternal enjoyment of being able to enjoy our mind to God through the fasting of our body. It is a wonderful thing that we have lust ashes given to us after Mass today, because we remember the great efficacy that ashes has had in the past. The Old Testament as well as New Testament, holy souls have used ashes to indicate uh, the degree of penance. In the Old Testament, of course, we have King David using ashes every day in reparation for his sins. Job in the Old Testament sat in sackcloth and ashes, lest to be tempted to offend Almighty God by being impatient with his sufferings and his contradictions. Or oh, with the Ninevites, right? The Ninevites sat in sackcloth and ashes, they fasted, they prayed for 40 days and 40 days, and alleviated, of course, the great punishment that had been promised to them by the prophet uh, 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 Jonas. And we also, my dear friends, we can fast more effectively than they can, because our ashes are blessed. Their ashes are not blessed. They were done in the spirit of penance and penitence and reparation. But our ashes are blessed by the priest and with a very solemn blessing. The priest used holy water as well as incense, said four long prayers over the ashes as we uh, had the ceremony before the Ash Wednesday Masses. And of course,
course, we impose these solemnly blessed ashes upon the foreheads of those who came to communion rail. Let's be a clerk, of course, put our skin ashes on our tonsure. But why do we have ashes? What is ashes? Ashes is a blessed sacramental. I mean, if the ashes unblessed in, in former days did so much uh, good for those who sat in sackcloth and ashes, beseeched the prayers of the, of the faithful as they would come into church, people would sit out church, outside church, like in Vestibule for three years, five years, seven years, or ten years, depending on their external uh, public sins, as we know from the early age of the church, in sackcloth with ashes on the head. If that did so much good for them, how much more are ashes that are solemnly blessed by the priest and ash wins they? They are sacramentals to enable us, to encourage us, and to propel us to do yet more penance, more fasting, in order to prepare ourselves yet more greatly for the kingdom of heaven. All these things and many more thoughts come to mind on this Sunday, but let's rejoice in the fact that we do have the fasting of the of Lent given to us. We should make sure that we don't forget about the whole reason why Lent is given to us. That's to restrict, to refrain, and to discipline ourselves. So Lent and time can be indeed a time of grace, a time of, of, of benefit and craft kind of preparation for Easter, for our eternal Easter in heaven. We think about all these things, and we ask our divine Lord especially to a holy mass today, that we may be more zealous in refraining from worldly stuff, and be more zealous in abstaining from those things that are not illicit. We ask our divine Lord especially at Holy Communion today to be able to, to fast and to abstain in a proper way, not in a worldly way, but in a proper way, to be able to to do a little penance here on earth in order that with the union, you being united with the whole church militant, our prayers may have such efficacy before the throne of Almighty God. If you go back and read the last prayer that the priest said after he closed ashes on the people on Ash Wednesday, it is the shortest prayer he said that day before the house. But that prayer is a powerful prayer, a wonderful prayer, one that I always take inspiration from. It asks Almighty God that with the imposition of ashes, we may be able to unite with the church militant in doing battle with the enemies of salvation. And that's what that's all about, doing battle with the enemies of salvation, having fasting, having abstinence, empower our prayers and our, and our needs before the throne of God. So we think about these things, and we ask the divine Lord especially to make us more earnest and more zealous, more disciplined throughout the season of Lent, so that we may progress in the knowledge and love of Almighty God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.